Welcome to the Home Pesticide Review Board. Today we're bringing you a detailed review of the Major Pro and Major 10. We've already discussed their main features before, so now we'll break down some of the more specific functions and share them with you one by one. First, let's talk about the audio. Many people are concerned that the speakers might distort the sound. Here, we've placed the device in a familiar spot to test it out, and the sound quality is still very strong. I feel that the overall audio quality hasn't been affected by the update at all. Next, let's look at the benchmark scores. Previously, I got a score of 2.7 million, and as you can see, it's still quite stable. This time, we're running the test again. Let's see what happens. Well, here's the problem. There are all sorts of crashes and instability. Online, people are saying that Antutu and Honor of Kings are having a big dispute. Previously, they wouldn't let them run benchmarks or allow OTA supervision, so maybe they really did something to mess things up. Now, the benchmark scores are all unstable, so we might as well just stop running them. Otherwise, if we keep running them... But even so, it doesn't really matter. After all, benchmark scores are just numbers. The actual gaming experience is a much more genuine reflection. Here you can see that in the game assistant, I've set everything to the highest settings. For some reason, it's stuck at 60 FPS for humans. I remember it used to go up to 90, or maybe I'm mistaken. As for graphics quality, I've set everything to the highest as well, so there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Next, we're going to play for about half an hour to check the current heat, smoothness, and resolution performance. To be honest, I feel like the resolution drops a bit, especially after continuous battles. As for smoothness, it's still okay, there's no obvious drop or stutter. In the end, I played for nearly half an hour, and it took me quite a while to finally defeat this boss for the first time. Now let's take a look at the phone's temperature at this moment. When it comes to reviews, I'm always the most fair and objective, no doubt about that. For the temperature, let's see. The top is at 43 degrees, and the middle of the device reaches 45 degrees. Honestly, that's not an ideal temperature, it's just average nothing special. After that, I went out and took a few telephoto night shots. In my opinion, the imaging hasn't really been optimized yet. Probably have to wait for the Mageway 8 release, they're keeping it under wraps for now. Next up is what everyone cares about most, battery life. I feel like there was a bug after the first update, because it told me I'd used it for over 20 hours, so I picked 1159 to see if the battery would drain normally overnight. Otherwise, I wouldn't know how to test battery life in the future. Time flies so fast, it's already 12 o'clock. Luckily, I can see the time reset back to zero minutes. So we've fully charged the battery and turned it on. This is an overnight battery life test. You can see that the current screen on time is 41 minutes. Let's start from here. The time is 1.24 a.m. Time passes as swiftly as blood flows, just like the pale green sunlight of early morning. When the sunlight shines into the room, let's take a look. The current time is 8.36, so it's been a little over 7 hours and 10 minutes. After all that time, the remaining battery is still at 100%. The standby battery life is actually a bit better than I expected. As usual, let's continue charging with the regular charger. Here, I charge for 10 minutes, let's check the time. It's 8.16, and the screen on time is 43 minutes. So I started the day's screen on time test. As always, we stick to our usual routine here. For each test, I always play two rounds of Honor of Kings to simulate a normal person's daily usage. Then, around noon, the battery dropped to 50%, and the screen on time was only 5 hours and 29 minutes. Looking at it this way, the pressure is still pretty high. After all, it's just a little over 4 hours, and already half the battery is gone. Then, in the afternoon, I went out. For every battery life test, I also spend about 2 hours using the phone on a mobile network while outside, just like a regular user. On the way back home in the evening, at 7.29pm, the phone was already out of battery. I got home. Let's take a look at the screen on time at this moment. Right now it's 7.55pm. Seeing this time, I guess many of you are probably a bit disappointed, but it's okay. This is normal, you'll get used to it. As for the screen on time, it's 8 hours and 33 minutes. If you subtract the 43 minutes from before the adjustment, it's 7 hours and 50 minutes. With this performance, I really think it's honestly just pretty average. But don't worry, this is just a beta version right now, and a lot of things are still unstable. With the public beta and future patches, it should be able to catch up and improve. Here, I'll also test the charging speed for everyone. After charging for 26 minutes, the temperature reached 40 degrees and the battery was at 75%. At 43 minutes, the battery reached 98%. Finally, after 50 minutes, it was fully charged to 100%. The last 2% really took quite a while to charge. This charging speed is also just average. In the end, let's sum it up. 
As you can see, Muji OS 12 is still in its infancy, so it's completely reasonable that they're not rolling out large-scale beta testing yet. I believe the official version coming soon will be even better. There are still plenty of major features waiting for everyone to explore. Bye for now.